Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coat's on back order, and since we do not have a Pokemon X single battle anymore, we have finished off our little, uh, you know, routine in that, I decided I want to put a little something different for now, just so, like a little placeholder, and I thought I want to actually show off one of the other games, Pokemon related, that I've been playing lately, and it's Pokemon Picross. Now, I was talking with somebody on Twitter, and she was asking for help on how to figure out how to, like, you know, use different abilities in the game, like Blue Force and such, and I thought, I kind of want to put together a little how to play Picross. Now, I know the game itself gives you a little instructional um, area. I get like five, five stages to uh, figure out exactly how to play Picross. But I thought I might want to show it more in action. So we're going to check out a couple of puzzles in Picross today. And I'll show you basically the basics of how to play Pokemon Picross. Let's begin. So starting off in the Pokemon Picross little tutorial video, we're going to take a look at the Bidoof puzzle. It's a pretty simple puzzle. It's, got, it's a 10 by 10 size, and these puzzles can vary in size. Uh, they go 15 to 15, and I think that the highest I've seen thus far, usually reserved for Legendary or Mega Evolution, is 20 across by 15 tall. But let's get right into it. Just going to tap on the Pokemon and get into the puzzle. There we go. So when you first look at the Picross field, you'll see that it is a grid of squares with numbers along the left and top. And the numbers represent how many of the pixels or squares in that row or column that you'll have to fill in. So, how do you get started? Well, you want to look for your bigger numbers first of all. We're going to take a look at the number 7 down on this bottom row. So, if you were to fill in 7 squares, they all have to be uh, connected. And you can either start them, you'll see here, excuse me, here, here, or here. What this means is, no matter where they start or end, these four pixels in the middle are always going to be filled in, so I can simply just fill these in right now. So, that's your it's a good starting point. Now what you want to do is take the information you have here and cross-reference it with the column numbers. You'll see three of these columns end in a number one, which means a single pixel is the last that can appear in that column. So we can take our little X and mark off those right now. So that's going to help us build the puzzle a little bit more. This here has a 1 and a 6, so a single pixel separated by a number of X's followed by 6 straight in a row is going to be in this column, which means since we know where this column ends as far as pixels go, we can fill in 6 pixels straight up right now. And top it off with an X. You don't need to fill in the X's, but it is a lot useful to you know, keep track of where you can fill a pixel and where you can't. So, now that we have that information, we can start looking ahead at some other things. So this column here, or this row, you'll see the number one is grayed out because the game will tell you when you have a pixel in a spot that cannot, you know, it's not wrong, basically. So this means that we have to have two single pixels on this side of the X's and a double pixel, two pixels, on this side. So there is a way we can figure stuff out here. Since there is only three possible squares that can be filled in, and we have to fill in two of them consecutively, we know it's either going to be this one and the middle one, or the middle one and the end. In either situation, the middle one is going to be filled in, so we'll fill it in right now. We can also figure out the two on this side. You'll see that we have three pixels. We have to have, have to have a single pixel separated by an X and another single pixel. Obviously, there's only one way that could work. We're going to fill in one and two and put the X in the middle, and that solves that little section as well. So now, we start to cross-reference some more stuff. This column has just single pixel squares to fill in, which means that we can surround this one with X's. And we're going to do just that. Put X's on top and bottom. This helps us with the number 7 as well, because you'll see we have a single pixel over here, which will not be filled in, because the any filled in pixels in this row have to connect to the initial 7, so we can fill in an X. This also helps us by letting us know that if the squares were to start here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we know we can fill in two more because no matter if it starts here or ends here, these six will always be filled in. So we can continue moving on. We have a single pixel at the bottom of this column, so we can surround that with X's. And what else can we figure out right now? Well, this is good here. We have a 5, a 1, and a 1. It's going to be 5 pixels with an X, a 1, an X, and a 1. Now, there could be more X's, but if you do count them up, you'll see we have 5 on the top section, a blank for an X, a one pixel, blank for an X, and a one. We can actually fill out this entire column right now, which we're going to do. Oops. It's kind of hard to tap around my camera the way I have it set up, so bear with me if I make any mistakes. The problem with making a mistake, though, is 
Pokemon Picross limits you to a certain amount of energy at the start of each game, basically. And every time you fill in a square, it takes up one of those bars or blocks of energy. And you have to wait for your energy to recharge. But anyway, continuing on, so now we can use the, what they call edge power. When you have something along the edge, say the, t the left or right or the top or bottom, it helps you figure things out because you know nothing can go to the right of this side because it's off the puzzle. So we can initially assume that whatever number is the rightmost in this row here, or any of these rows, is going to be the number that corresponds to these pixels. So we do see four of these five end in a one, meaning that we can end off these ones with X's, but we do see a number two, which means that we're going to fill in a second pixel here and block that off with an X. So continuing on, let's see what else we can figure out. Well, we do see a big number seven, and as I say, look for your big numbers, and if you can, try to solve them first, because they fill in the more squares to help you out. So since the seven starts at the bottom, we're going to move it all the way up seven pixels. And we can put the rest as X's. Anytime you see a row, such as these here, that are grayed out completely, that means you filled in all the pixels required, so you can actually X out the rest of the blank spaces to help you figure out the rest of the puzzle. So we do see that now this 7 down here, it is ended off here, which means we have 6 filled in, there's only one possible space left, so we can fill that in with a pixel. Now just kind of perusing the puzzles, checking things out, we see a single 1 here, and 1 is the last number here, so we're going to be able to fill this in with an X. And now that we have that, we see that there is still a solid line of 6 we have to fill in, and there's 2 individual pixels. We know that they have to be connected, so we can just fill those 2 in which helps us with this column here, because we see that it is a single pixel column the entire way, so we can fill in an X there. Now three is the next number here, and we've already got the next number, or the next pixel started, so we can go straight up like that, and X that off, and we see the number four is in this area. So the four have to be connected, the one is already taken care of. We can X out everything except for the middle pixel, which we are going to connect to complete that row. So again, we see a single pixel here. Now that we've done that, you'll see that there are two blank spaces and four up here, and we need a connection of four pixels in this column. So obviously they cannot fit in here. They're going to go up here. And that helps us solve some more stuff. You'll see I'm just putting some X's where I don't need any pixels. Those rows are complete. And we have a one, a one, and a two. So these are already emptied out for us. We can just fill them in. Now we see a 2 and a 3, well the 3 is already covered, the 2 obviously there's only one space left. Same up here, we have a 2 to fill in, we just filled in 1, only one space left there. That also fills in the 6, we can put an X here, this column is complete, and we see a 4 is all that's left to do, so we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and we have just solved the Bidoof puzzle. That is the basics of solving a Picross puzzle. I'm going to show you one more puzzle and just talk you through that one. So here we have another puzzle. I'm not actually going to show you which one this is yet. I'm going to wait and show you as the puzzle itself is revealed. This one's a little bit trickier to get started because there is some difficult trying to figure out the way these numbers work. But, like I say, search for your bigger numbers. We see a 4 and a 3 or a 2 and a 5 in either this column or this row. I think we're going to start the 2 and 5. So, if we were to start filling this in, we can assume that the 2, the furthest left it can go, starts in the left column and a 2 and then an X. That leaves just seven pixels on the right side for the five to fill in. And as I mentioned with the seven pixels in the last puzzle, the Bidoof uh, puzzle, you can figure out that if it starts here, these five will fill in. If it starts here, these five fill in. Or if it starts here, these five will fill in. So we know the three middle ones of those seven can be safely filled in. And that's going to help us with these two columns, because these are all single pixel columns. We can fill these in right now. Oops. I'm having trouble tapping properly. Here we go. Now, here's a little thing that you can do too. This is a single pixel here, and we see we have a one or a two. It doesn't seem like you can really fill anything in just yet, but there is actually something you can do. Now, if the one was to be up here, we would have an X, and then these would be the two filled in, and the rest would be X. But you could, you know, we can't assume that. This could be the single pixel here, and the two could appear somewhere else down here. Either way, this has to be an X, because if it wasn't, if this was filled in, we would have the 2, we would need an X, there would be no space for the 1. So we know we can fill that in as an X. 
That really helps us in that row because we see 2, 2, and 2. We have 5 and a 2 over here. So with an X needing to go between these two, we know we can fill in these two, these two, and the only two left are over, whoops, over here, and we can fill that in. So this works out well because with this column of 4 and 3, we know the 4 cannot start up here, so we can X that out. And that leaves us just enough space to fill in 1, 2, 3, 4, leave a space, and 3. So you see this is a lot of back and forth, you just try to figure things out. This here has a single batch of 2, and we know it has to start here at the highest, or at the lowest I should say, which means it cannot go anywhere here, these can all be X'd out. And again we see a single pixel here, There's nothing more we can do with that just yet. But we can take a look at this column as well. So 2, 1, 2, 1. By figuring this out, we see there's only two possible combinations this can be. It's going to be like this, or it's going to be like that. And as you see, in either combination, there are two pixels that are always filled in. And they're going to be this one that's already filled in. And coming down here, we see 1, 2, 3, right there. And this leads into this row, which is going to be 2 at the rightmost side. We can X this one. And can we figure anything else out? Well, this complete row can now be X'd out, which gives us a little bit of work, or a little bit of stepping forward in the puzzle. Now, this column here, we see that there is a pixel here that's going to correspond with the 2, which is the highest most number, and a single one down here. And this one is going to apply to the 1 right here. So we can X out everything else around that. We can also put an X here because we know the 2 cannot extend down 3 pixels, so that's going to be filled in. And anything else we can figure out? Well, we can now figure out a bit of this. Since the 2 has to be either these 2 or these 2, leaving space for an, a 1 and an X in between, we can fill in the 1 here, and the 2 goes up here, leaving that space for the X. Alright, now just bear with me, it's going to take a look at the puzzle here. We can put a pixel here because if the 5 starts here, 1, 2, 3, 4, it has to fill in this square. Now, what else we can figure out is this has to be an X, because if we fill in a pixel here, it's going to give us a row of 6. We do not have a row of 6, so we know that this has to be an X. We then have to put a pixel here to finish the 5, and we also know we can fill in this as the 2. So we can put an X here. This leaves just this top space to fill this column of 2, and this is a single pixel row. We can fill that in with an X, and the 2 is complete. We can fill that in. So you see, it starts to sort of almost solve itself as you continue through. This here, we need a 2 at the top, right there. And we're going to finish off this row, which is now completely done. And what else can we figure out with what we have? So we see we need 3 down here, and there are 4 possibilities. But the 2 middle ones will have to fill in, regardless of whether it starts at the top or the second, or the second pixel down. These twos are now filled in. We can put the X's there. We have two single pixels left to fill here, and there's only two empty spaces, so we fill them both in, which completes the two on this part. And the three can now be filled in, because there's only one space left here. This leaves a pixel here. It has to correspond to that two, put it right over here, X out the rest. This here, we see a two, which means it can't fit in a single pixel area, and it can fit into these three, the middle one's going to be filled in no matter what. Now, this 3 can fit into these 4, which means it can fill in this one here, regardless of where it starts. We can also put an X over here. This can solve this part here as well, at least one more pixel. The 2 has to be either here or here, and a single pixel has to come beneath it. Well, if the 2 is here, we can't put a single here because that would make a, co a connection of 3, so this single one is filled in in the corner. And X out the rest. This helps us with this, because we see there's only one pixel left that this can fill. And that completes this row as well. And we can fill in a 2 right here. Single pixel, we can put an X here. And we can put an X in this row to finish this off. And we'll fill that in there because of the 2. And we see that there is only one possible space that can fill in X. We have a 1 down here and a 3 here. That leaves just this pixel left to fill. And you'll see, that completes the Pikachu puzzle. Now just to give you an example of how complicated these can be, because these are pretty simple puzzles for the start, I'm going to show you Mew. Take a look at this puzzle. 
Energy gauge is too low. I don't have enough energy in my game to actually complete this puzzle, but I can still go in and just show you the size of this. Let's do it, Mew. That's quite a sizable puzzle. But you can always just use the techniques that I was telling you about. You can see here a 3 and an 8 have to fill in here. So what you can do is count up. We've got 1, 2, 3, X. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So since the 8 can possibly start at the top, and it's going to go to the square at the lowest point, we can fill in 1 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That gives you a starting point. Now it's kind of hard to work on this because it is a single pixel in the middle of the puzzle. That's why they say you want to try to go for the edges first if possible. But that is a basic rundown of how to do Pokemon Picross. I'm not actually going to complete the Mew puzzle because of course I don't have the energy and I don't think I have the time to do it either. There are missions you can do to try to get uh, some stars in the game just to sort of complete a puzzle perfectly. But I've already done that with this as far as I can go. Some requirements say you have to set certain Pokemon and as you'll see, you have to set Mewtwo to complete the Mew puzzle. But that is a basic rundown of Picross. I hope you found this interesting, and for anyone that wants to pick up this game, it is a free download in the Nintendo eShop, and it is a free to play, or what is it, free to play, but you can also spend some money to get some pick rights, which are the way you unlock new stages, you unlock more slots for your Pokemon. And I didn't mention that either. There are Pokemon you can set, in fact, I'll show you this right here. Whenever you complete a puzzle, you get the Pokemon in your team, and you'll see each one has a special ability. For example, a lot of grass types have something called auto-fix, where if you have an unfocused camera, there we go, if you make a mistake, the Pokemon will automatically fix it for you. There are other things like slow time, like Helio or Heliolisk here. You can slow the timer down, which is good for those missions where you have to complete it in a certain time limit. We have Hyperscan, where Noivern or other Pokemon will search the entire playing field and look for any mistakes you've made. Blue Force actually lets you fill in, or not fill in, but it shows you which rows or columns you can fill in an X or a square to help you along the way. It's like it's a surefire thing you can fill in, and they let you know which row or column you can do that in. Other things like freeze time, I love the freeze time. For missions that say complete in 5 minutes or more, you can actually take like 20 minutes if you set the right Pokemon with freeze time. So that is pretty much the end of the basic rundown of Pokemon Picross. It is a fun game if you like puzzles. I recommend picking it up and giving it a try, and hopefully you enjoy it. If you do like this game, you know, if you pick it up and give it a try and enjoy it, feel free to leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think of it, and just how much you like it. All right, with that, we're going to end off this video. Thanks for checking out this How to Play Picross video, everybody, and I'll catch you next time.